I have a question. Question. This is for documentary. Have any of you read The Catch in the Rye? No. Have you read? Oh shoot. Oh my god. Oh god. Have you read The Catch in the Rye? Have you read? Oh no. Have you read The Catch in the Rye? No. Oh god. I lost her again. Ashley, Ashley, have you read The Catch in the Rye? No. Oh my gosh. No, no, no. Have you read The Catch in the Rye? What? Have you read The Catch in the Rye? No. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Wait. She has. She actually read it. Published in 1951, The Catcher in the Rye is by far one of J.D. Salinger's most renowned works. Its release has both infuriated and elated the public and critics alike. It has become one of the great classics of post-war American literature, remaining a bestseller since its publication and selling over 65 million copies. The Catcher in the Rye has commanded the affection of each generation of readers for over half a century. Innovative for its time and characterizing an era in American history, it continues to influence the way in which society defines itself as a result of its enduring popularity and force of impact. With the Great Depression and Stalin's nightmarish totalitarian regime still a haunting memory, Americans would turn away from radical dissent and develop a more uniform identity. As a result, American society would come to adopt a culture of conformity. With the GI Bill in place, the post-war economy boomed and it was within this historic context that J.D. Salinger would write his influential novel. Like many coming-of-age stories, a teenager, in this case Holden Caulfield, struggles to find his place in society. Appropriately, the central conflict in the novel is Holden dealing with his own identity. Holden is kicked out of Pensy Prep, but he doesn't really care. He sees all the adults as phonies and dislikes the other students, displaying anger at his roommate Stradlater for his womanizing behavior. He runs off on his own instead of telling his parents about his expulsion, staying at hotels. At one hotel, he is pressured into ordering a prostitute, but he decides that he only wants to talk to her. Later, while walking through the streets, he hears a boy singing, If a body can catch a body coming through the rye, and these lyrics stick with him even though these are incorrect lyrics that Holden mishears. He ends up sneaking back into his house to visit his sister, Phoebe. Their parents are out of the house. Thinking of those lyrics, he talks to Phoebe about how he sees himself as a catcher, saving children from going off a cliff, saving children from the real world and keeping them innocent. He then visits a teacher, Mr. Anatoly, who gives him reasonable life advice and espouses the values of real education. He displays creepy behavior overnight when Holden wakes up to find Mr. Anatoly stroking his hair, though, and Holden immediately exits Anatoly's residence. He decides to run off on his own and tells Phoebe that he'll be leaving. Phoebe wants to go with him, but he won't let her. However, Phoebe won't let him be, so he goes to the zoo with Phoebe and finds happiness in watching Phoebe. As a result, he decides to not run away after all. In fact, he finds himself missing people like Stradlater. Holden wants everything, including himself, to stay the same and never change, just like the exhibitions in his favorite museum. But the world just doesn't work like that. He seems to be afraid of adulthood, avoiding confronting the idea of sexuality when dealing with Stradlater's womanizing and with the prostitute. Instead, he calls most adults phonies and avoids growing up, though he drinks and smokes regardless. His attitude towards adults isn't totally undeserved, even though seemingly trustworthy Mr. Anatoly displays questionable behavior. He also wants to save others from adulthood, illustrated by his vision of being the catcher in the rye, in which he saves children from innocence. Holden's resistance to change leads to an inability to adapt and to empathize with other people, and he cannot fit in with the world around him. J.D. Salinger, living from 1919 to 2010, was an American writer and a World War II veteran. As he grew up, he switched between many schools, something that he incorporates into the character of Holden Caulfield, the protagonist of Catcher in the Rye. He was famous for his reclusive nature, Catcher in the Rye was his biggest success. His lack of substantial status in the literary world prior to this gave him less scrutiny from critics. The freedom he had because of this allowed him to craft a novel that was nonconformist and had an odd writing style for the time. The style was negative and colloquial, using much slang such as phony or screw up. Catcher in the Rye is regarded as one of the defining works of what being a teenager is like. Holden displays emotions typical of a cynical teenager who feels as if he does not fit in the world. He shows a lack of direction, a sense of disgruntlement, 
and a sharp sense of wit. Holden is an archetypical and human representation of adolescence. Though he is a complex character, he is truly a teenager. He is misanthropic and cynical, but that's just how teenagers are. As an expression of alienation, the novel strikes a chord with teenagers and young adults who don't truly feel like a member of society. The book is a symbol of American individualism and rebellion in a time of conformity. It appealed to people as a form of <coughs> countercultural revolt. Think of the hippies of the 60s. However, though the novel had success, it was also often banned in schools. Controversy surrounded Catcher in the Rye. So despite the literary merit, the Catcher in the Rye has been a highly controversial book that has been the subject of intense debate since its publication. In 1981, it was the most censored book in the US and by 2009, it still ranked number six among the most frequently challenged book, according to the Office of Intellectual Freedom. Due to the offensive language and sexually explicit content, many have considered Salinger's book an unsuitable book for young students. In the 1978, the novel was banned from high school reading lists in Issaquah, Washington as a result of parent complaints of radical views and frequent use of profanity feature in the novel. Some even accused the book of a part of a communist plot that was gaining foothold in schools. Although the ban was reversed a year later, the controversy around the book continued. In the shadow of the Stalin regime, many Americans felt as if they had to conform as Americans to defend the United States against such a communist threat. But Holden Caulfield doesn't conform. So Ms. Badford, what did you think of the book? The Catcher in the Rye? Yes. I like The Catcher in the Rye. Okay, anything specific about it that you like? Well, I don't like The Catcher in the Rye that much. Okay. I like it, okay. It's, people generally like the book, I think, when we read it. It's interesting, it's, it does a great job of, of really creating a strong voice for the narrator and really allowing you to get into his head, but I think he's obnoxious and, yeah, I think it gives, I think there's a lot of symbolism that makes a lot of sense to people that are in high school and I think people usually get pretty into the character whether they like him or dislike him and I think it's really good okay. for that. Is there, are there any like symbols or themes that you remember or that you think are important? Um, well yeah, you know, there's the hat, there's the ducks in the frozen pond, um, there's the gray hair, all the stuff that deals with like sort of coming of age and like being straddling two worlds, sort of adolescence in the middle of like childhood and adulthood, all that kind of thing. Okay. Sort of the idea of like trying to preserve one's innocence, but that's futile. You can't do that. What did you think about the book, The Catching Rod? Uh, I found it to be very unmemorable. <laughs> what specific part <laughs> most unmemorable? Oh gosh, I think it started somewhere around page one. <laughs> and it went to, uh, gosh, the last page. Probably somewhere near the end. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So just all of it is just not memorable? Uh, if I remembered more, I would tell you, but uh, for the most part, I think it was pretty unmemorable, yeah. Okay, so what's the question? <laughs> what do you think about the book, The Catch in the Rock? Um, I, it is a classic. However, I like to read books that make me feel happy. Um, I think life is depressing enough that I don't need to, when I want entertainment, I want to go somewhere that takes me to an alternate world. Um, do you think there's any way you can make the book um, more appealing to readers? Wow. Um, more appealing to my interests. Well, I like kung fu. Okay. So if you add, um, you know, a few scenes with some kung fu in it, maybe some scenes where they're in bamboo fighting each other. That'd be good. Mr. Warson, what did you think of the book, Catch in the Rod? Uh, well, it's been a long time since I read it, but I remember enjoying it. I thought Holden Caulfield was a pretty interesting, fascinating, sympathetic character. I liked kind of his outlook on the world, kind of the way he went about things in the whole, you know, Catcher in the Rye metaphor that goes throughout the book. I really, it connected with me when I was in high school. It's relatively modern. It's nice to have something that's, you know, 20th century at least, as opposed to a lot of other English language classics tend to be older than that, so it's nice to have something that's at least somewhat close to current times. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good one. 
<laughs> oh my god. Catcher in the Rye is regarded as one of the defining works of what being a teenager is like. Teenager. <laughs> Despite the, the literary. <laughs> literary. Merit. The, in the. In the 1991. The. <laughs> It sorry, was, sorry. It was the, the most sensible the <laughs> US. <laughs> okay. What do you think about the book from Catch and the Rye? She know, what was this book? I didn't even know. <laughs> Why didn't Daniel just do it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was just voice, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. You do it. The style was negative and very colloquial. Using <laughs> so much strength. <laughs> Such <laughs> <laughs> Funny or <laughs> screw up. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chico, number one. <laughs>